The Honourable Member for Toronto, Danforth. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as the Member for Toronto, Danforth, and the Parliamentary and Democratic Reform Critic uh, for the NDP, I'm very pleased to stand and to speak again on Motion 431, moved by my colleague from Saskatoon, Humboldt. It's a simple message, but it's also uh, a simple motion, but it's also a worthwhile motion. And uh, especially welcome motion, I have to say, coming as it does from a Conservative MP without, I would hazard a guess, uh, the full support uh, of the government, at least at the moment. Um, what I would like to emphasize in my remarks is to take the uh, member from Humboldt, uh, Saskatoon Humboldt's uh, offer up and talk a little bit more about general parliamentary reform that his motion could help trigger, and could help uh, nurture. Um, I would say that uh, it's important with respect to this particular motion to note that it would be something that would temper the dominating influence of the Prime Minister's office and other political parties' central apparatus, if you like, on aspects of parliamentary life and MPs themselves. Uh, I see that as a knock-on effect to the motion that needs to be uh, taken into account. I'd also note that uh, partly along the lines of comments we heard earlier from the member for Saanich Gulf Islands and King's Hants, um, the last two years have given rise to certain concerns on the part of the opposition about how some committees have been working. Uh, it does appear that some chairs have been unable to manage committee business in such a way as to give members a fair opportunity to prepare for meetings involving witnesses uh, or to present amendments with sufficient notice. These are just minor examples. Um, I was earlier looking across the way at the chair for PROC, the uh, member for Elgin, Middlesex, London, and I'm most assuredly not speaking of that honorable member who's chairing the uh, PROC with, with prowess, good faith, and um, uh, uh, in the spirit, I think, of what we want to see with elected chairs. Now, the NDP is actually in favor of improving a number of parliamentary practices to achieve a better balance between legislative and executive power and to relax the strict control that's evolved over the years, not simply under this government, of the Prime Minister's office over parliamentary life. And even though some parliamentary reforms, some, some of the ones I'm about to mention, are more of a priority, I would say, than the one currently before us, there's nothing stopping us from taking a serious look at the issue of House selection of committee chairs. The NDP has for some time, I would say always in fact, advocated for more open, more transparent democracy. Canadians, I believe, know that. And this study would have the benefit of helping stimulate debate on the wider issues of healthy democratic practice. Uh, both on this particular issue, I would have to say, and on wider questions of the openness and transparency of Parliament in general. And for that reason, as a member of PROC, I do look forward to participating in the process if indeed this motion is adopted, which, as I've made clear, I hope it will be. Um, as noted, it is PROC that will be examining this motion if it's passed, and the study will be added to an already fairly long list of proposed amendments that this committee has before it to examine with respect to uh, the functioning of the House of Commons. Um, and given that the initiative here before us is from the member for Saskatoon Humboldt, perhaps we will see more interest in these general parliamentary reform questions from the Conservative MPs that are his colleagues, as well perhaps even from uh, the party as a whole that, form, that is presently in government. We'll, we'll see, obviously. So let me now please talk about some of these parliamentary reforms that I think the current motion uh, will help us um, focus on as well, at some point at least. Uh, the first is to limit the systematic use, and I have to say, unfortunately, abuse of in-camera proceedings in committee, which decrease transparency and the impartiality with which committees can do their work. The NDP has taken the lead on this most recently. Last Thursday, we announced that each one of the House's committees would be presented by NDP members with the following motion related to in-camera proceedings. Each committee will be asked to adopt a motion that says that the committee may meet in camera only for the purposes of discussing, and then five things are listed. Wages, salaries, and other employee benefits, 
contracts and contract negotiations, labor relations and personnel matters, draft reports, and finally, briefings concerning national security. And then added to the motion is that all votes taken in camera be recorded in the minutes of proceedings, including how each member voted when recorded votes are requested, again, in camera. So this is one effort on our part to do something that I think parallels the effort uh, of the member from Saskatoon Humboldt, who's expressed his concern that perceptions of how Parliament worked are as important as how Parliament actually does work. And I think the perceptions of what the uh, generalized practice of very frequently going in camera has done to this House really do have to be taken seriously. A second reform uh, would be to limit the government's um, use and, uh, I would say again, abuse of time allocation motions. In order to stop uh, the party in power, especially a majority power, obviously from systematically limiting debate in the House of Commons. In this regard, it's important to note the November 2011 motion moved by the NDP member for Windsor Tecumseh, uh, which would give the Speaker of the House of Commons the authority to determine whether the grounds for the time allocation are in fact reasonable. A third reform is to create some discipline over the use of prorogation. I don't think I have to actually add and abuse of prorogation in this chamber, most people would know that that follows with recent practice. We know how often it has been abused by the present Prime Minister, and in the past by others, other Prime Ministers, such as when Jean Chrétien prorogued to take the heat off him during one phase of the Liberal corruption scandal around sponsorship money. No doubt we can find ways to structure the Governor General's discretion by legislation, but one initial reform would be to at least prevent the government from using prorogation as a cloak for shutting down Parliament without having to at least get Parliament's support. And it's for that reason that in March 2010, the former leader of the NDP and the, of the official opposition for a period in 2011, Jack Layton, um, tabled a motion that was adopted by this House uh, that required that uh, the Prime Minister shall not advise the Governor-General to prorogue any session of any Parliament for longer than seven calendar days without a specific resolution of the House of Commons to support such prorogation. Last week, I attempted to, see, uh, to seek unanimous consent to move this motion again to reaffirm it, but unfortunately, there was not such support in the House. I believe we should be looking seriously at this quite minor uh, in the broader scheme of things, reform, at least to get us looking at the whole institution of prorogation. A fourth reform, Mr. Speaker, would be to modernize the process for tabling petitions in order to allow for online petitions and perhaps allow this House to get somewhat creative with what we do with petitions, what kind of proceedings in the House might be triggered by such uh, petitions or e-petitions. Um, a motion, I think as some in this chamber will know, most will know, moved by the Honourable Member, my colleague for Burnaby Douglas, in February seeks to have a PROC, the Procedure and House Affairs Committee, design such a system. And I would encourage all members of this chamber, uh, including my uh, colleagues opposite, to support that motion, uh, or to at least give it very serious consideration. A fifth reform with one minute to go, thank you, Mr. Speaker, involves the reform of the procedure for making amendments in committee. Uh, this may not be just a procedural amendment. It may actually involve a cultural change. On this Prime Minister's watch, in particular, almost none of the opposition's amendment, amendments in various committees seem to be able to make their way through to acceptance. Uh, and this is tied, of course, to overall greater independence of committees from the government which is not at all uh, distant from the rationale of the motion before us. To conclude, these are only a few of many dozen reforms that I think collectively those of us in this House could come up with that could make the functioning and the perception of the public of this House uh, much better than is currently the case. We do need to change the prevailing parliamentary culture and resuscitate and deepen certain parliamentary traditions of collegiality, cross-party cooperation in the public interest, and civility. Uh, I do believe that the motion from the member for Humboldt, Saskatoon, will contribute 
to that process, and for that reason, I will be particularly happy to support it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.